My name's Della and welcome to my channel. So I'm a writer and I find random word generators really helpful. I'll use them to look up names or fantasy places and then I'll use them as a tool to help me create my own words or names, things like that. And I was trying to think of a fun video idea and I thought why not use a random generator to find what I'm going to read. So I've got my Kindle here, I'm going to go on a random word generator and whatever word it comes up I'm going to go on the Kindle app and try and find uh, three books that have that word in it. And I'm only going to pick um, Kindle Unlimited books or free books because times are hard. <laughs> I just, had, I just googled random word generator and the website randomwordgenerator.com popped up. I'll link it down below. So, just gonna generate a random word and pillow. <laughs> so, let's search pillow in the Kindle store. Okay, so three rules that we've got. I wanna pick three books. They all must be free because I'm cheap. <laughs> and no books in a series. So, if it's like the fifth book in a series, I'm not gonna pick that. So have a look pillow okay so a book came up called redeemer of shadows tribe tribes of the vampire book one but that doesn't have the word pillow in it so i don't know why that came up let me just click on it and see what it says oh so i'm a shell m pillow okay now that's not really that's the author but that's not the book title if we can't find anything we'll come back to this wow michelle you've written a lot of books if i can't find any free books at start of pillow then it's just going to be a michelle m pillow readathon i found a book it's called Pillow Talk by Freyra North. This doesn't look like a book I would like to read. A story of love and second chances from the best-selling author of Love Rules, The Sleepwalker. By day, Petra Flint is a talented jeweller working in lively London studio. By night, she sleepwalks. She has 40 carats of the world's rarest gemstones under her mattress, but it's the skeletons in her closet that makes it difficult for her to rest. The Insomniac. At one time, a promising songwriter Arlo Saviraj now teaches music at a boys boarding school in North Yorkshire. He assumes he's happy with his isolated lifestyle but like Petra, ghosts from his past disturb his sleep. Petra and Arlo loved each other from afar during their school days. Now, 17 years later, in a tiny sweet shop on a rainy day, they stand before each other once more. Could this be their second chance? Could it? We're about to find out. Download! Is this a book I would normally pick up? Nope! <laughs> but... This is the challenge I've set for myself, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the book, but I'm just not a very, like, romance... Is this a crime romance? Oh, who knows. On to the next book. Another book called Pillow Talk. I'm... I'm gonna skip that one, because we've already got one book called Pillow Talk. If we, again, if we can't find anything, then I'll go back to this book by Vianna Ammons, and then we'll take a look at them. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I found a book. Um, okay. So this book is called The Pillow Talk Collection, Eight Filthy Conversations. So I get the worst secondhand embarrassment. I find, I just find reading about sex so embarrassing. So this is going to be fun. So this is by Dolores Swallows. Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'm going to die. Taking a fleeting glimpse inside eight private bedrooms, we eavesdrop on couples having intimate conversations, which involve confessions about their past or relevations about their fantasies, inevitably lead them having hot sex. <laughs> Who'd have guessed what Shona got up to when she was in high school, or that Alison would go so far with a total stranger? Who would have guessed? And will Tom ever really know for sure if Eleanor's fantasy about the young Stodd was just a fantasy? By spying into these bedrooms, we as such as us get to learn all, all their sordid secrets and we also get to enjoy their reactions to the dirty disclosures. I'm just gonna download this. Honestly, I don't know what I was expecting. Pillow is such a, you know, a term for the bedroom, therefore, sex. <laughs> a third book called Pillow Talk by Pandora Pine. I'm not, there's so many pillow talks on this. There is a book called Pillows, Easy Instructions for Making Pillows. Um, can we just all agree that we're just going to skip? Let's add a fourth rule. Let's add a fourth rule. This, we're not going to pick up these types of books. Okay, there's another book called Pillow, The Story of a Girl and Her Pillow. I really hope it's not another erotica. <laughs> okay, it does look like a middle grade book, so thank God. Does anyone really know what a dream is or where dreams come from? Some people say this and some people say that. 
but no one is sure. Dreams are one of the most mysterious things in the world. Then one night, a young girl begins a very strange journey. With the help of her talking pillow, she makes an incredible discovery about the true nature of dreams. This is one girl's amazing story. Aww, that sounds quite sweet, actually. I'm happy that we're getting a cute book in all this madness. It's also short, which I appreciate. So I think what I'm going to do is start reading the middle grade first, because that's quite wholesome, quite sweet, um, and I can read it while I'm eating my breakfast and not, you know, burn into flames because I'm so embarrassed. Welcome to my kitchen. So I thought, let's make breakfast together. So I just finished Pillow, the story of a girl and her pillow, and it was super cute. It's kind of everything you would expect it to be. It's obviously not my type of book, but it'd be great for someone who's got younger kids and they want to read them a story. It's about Megan who goes to the dream world to save all the dreams that have gone missing and she meets lots of friends on her way. And it's just a cute story about not giving up on your dreams and also a talking pillow. I think next I'm going to read Pillow Talk by Feyre North, which is 432 Kindle pages. So considering it's quite a long book, hopefully it is something that I enjoy. I've been reading Pillow Talk now for a while, just in between while I'm doing my chores and whatnot. My thoughts on it so far, <laughs> as I said, it's not my type of book. It's also told in kind of a strange way, will be in the main guy's point of view, and then the girl will think something. It's just, it's a little bit jarring, and I don't think I like it. I'm still obviously gonna, you know, give it a whirl and try to read through it. But the book is free and it, I'm not working right now. So it's not like I've used any like valuable time or any money trying out a new book that I wouldn't necessarily pick up. I wouldn't say that I'm not interested. Like it has piqued my interest. So I am willing to go on this journey with the main characters. I just hope it doesn't become very romance heavy, even though I'm, it's a romance book. <laughs> it's quite a long book though, isn't it? It's, what was it, 450 pages? Maybe I should have picked up the other book first, <laughs> that weird erotica, but it felt weird reading a middle grade and then going straight to an erotica, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm honest. Side note, I'm not sure if anyone else is doing this, probably a lot of people are doing this during the quarantine, but um, I've been marathoning a lot of series. So I just finished Community and then I, and then I started watching Criminal Minds and it has made me cry almost every episode. <laughs> Okay, enough about Criminal Minds, let's get back to reading. But in the comments below, tell me what you guys are marathoning. I've been reading Pillow Talk and I'm gonna have to DNF it. I'm sorry. It's, okay. There's nothing technically wrong with the story. I think that, I think if I liked this genre, then I could easily read it. The actual writing style is super easy to get into. Like even though I wasn't really enjoying the story because it just, isn't my type of genre. I still found it easy to read so I feel like if you like the second chance romance type of books then this would be totally up your alley but this type of book just isn't for me. It's very much a, a slice of life going into someone's daily life and living their experiences which sometimes I don't mind if it's like a hard-hitting contemporary or there's some magical element. Usually if there's a magical element, then I find myself enjoying it a lot more. But in this case, when it's a romance book, it just it just does nothing for me. If the book was 300 pages, then I would slog my way through. But it's like 450-ish pages, and I'm sorry, I just can't do it. But if Pillow Talk sounds like your type of genre, then I would definitely pick it up. It's free on their Kindle store right now if you've got Amazon Limited. And they did use some language that I wasn't a massive fan of. So they did use a derogatory term, a derogatory term for gay. And I understand in the context of the book, they're all friends and they're saying in a very friendly manner. I'm not sure of the author's background and I'm not going to speculate, but it's not something that I typically like. It's the same with things like the N-word. While I understand that some people use it as a term of friendship, but 
it's never something that I particularly like to use because I always think even if you're making fun of like your gayness or your brownness or your blackness or whateverness there are always better words to use than those terms like I have no problems with gay jokes I have no problems with black jokes I have no problems with that but they always have to be funny like the punchline can't just be you're black hilarious or you're gay hilarious but the main character and her friendship group they all seemed like really nice people the main male love interest I really liked him as well he really likes music and as I really like music it's something that I felt like I could connect to him and it also seems like the author really did her research when it comes to um, jewellery and making jewellery so I totally commend her on that she may have a background in jewellery making I'm unsure but I really like the depth that she went into when discussing her job so this one's gonna be a miss for me unfortunately I'm just gonna dig in at it and now I'm gonna start reading that sexy erotica <laughs> so I just finished reading the last book I can't remember the title even though I just finished it but it had the word pillow in it now as I stated previously I am not good when it comes to uh, erotica and like sexy books I just get really cringed out and really embarrassed but I was like this is for my YouTube channel, I've got to give it a go. So I made myself a nice cup of tea, I lit a cheap candle that I got, you know, like I wanted to set the mood. And then I read the book. I fully expected to be like embarrassed and shy and didn't expect was to be completely bored out of my mind. All the characters are basically the same. There's seven stories in the book and every single character is two dimensional and boring. There's one couple that's like Irish, I suppose that's a character trait, but the actual like talking dirty like segments of the book are so painfully boring. Like I just started skim reading and just was like, ugh. When I got to the last couple I was just, I was like thank god I think we can just get through this final last boring couple and be done with this. Plot twist, that's not what happened. Instead of being bored, I got enraged. <laughs> So the last couple is a lesbian couple and I was like, love this. I was surprised that they'd all be boring straight couples, but no, we've got a boring lesbian couple instead. I so often believe that most stories that you don't like are just not your genre or you don't like tropes, but this was just offensively bad. Throughout the whole story, the, one of the women, Jessica, I believe, and her partner, Emma, Emma brought up that she wanted kids and Jessica was like, no, she wasn't ready for kids which is fine, she said she was 25, so I don't mind. But the more that we got into the story and the more that she talked about wanting a man and her meat fix and described in detail about having sex with another man while being in a relationship with a woman, I realised this was just not for me. <laughs> and at one point, Emma, the actual lesbian woman, she talks to her partner Jessica and says, when Jessica, the younger woman, wants kids, she'll just go find a man and have a normal family. <sighs> Jessica, the younger woman, was fetishising being in a lesbian relationship. The thing she said just made me so fucking angry. Add to it just being offensively bad. The dialogue was absolutely insane and made no sense. Like, people don't speak their way. At one point she says it's been too long since she's had a pulsing pole in her fire. Who? No one talks like that. I understand if you want to be diverse and you want to add diversity to your stories, that's great. That's what we love, but I'd rather a story be bland and boring than just pure offensive. The younger character, Jessica, she refers to them both as the, the D word, which I'm, not, I'm choosing not to use. I just hated this book. I'd rather the last story be another boring, middle-aged, straight couple having the same sex they had throughout the rest of the book. So what I'm saying is, if you want to read this book, read it. It's naff, but go ahead, it's free, you might as well. Also, I think this experiment was a bit of a failure. <laughs> I didn't really find any books that I liked whatsoever apart from the first one. But that's because it was cute, like it's middle grade, come on. I think I'm going to go back to books that I actually really want to read instead of forcing myself to read books that I don't like. So thanks for watching this little experiment. I post videos every Saturday. I'm currently reading Seafire, such a good book already. I'm only like, what, 100 pages in and absolutely loving it. And I'll see you next time. Bye!